And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for such another time in your presence. We ask that the light in your word will leap out from the pages of the book into our spirit, man. And we shall be the reality of the words we are about to hear. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. We are super glad to be here once again with you all over the world. And we believe that these teachings are not only words for you to hear, they are spirits um, sent into your own spirits to build your faith up and your walk with God. We are sent to have you have encounters with Christ and equip you in every facet of life for a life of exploit. And that is why you see us having all these messages over and over again, all over all platforms that it has reached all over the world. And we are super excited how we are getting um, many feedbacks and testimonies from different nations of the world um, as we commence and we grow in this vision. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Um, today I'm teaching one of the, you know, dear topics to my heart. And by the help of the Spirit, things that we have seen and we have experienced in God. And I'm teaching the prayer life of a disciple. The prayer life of a disciple. Not sure I'll be able to finish it. But hopefully in our subsequent broadcast, we'll be able to bring it to a close. The prayer life of a disciple. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus there explained clearly in one statement, the reason for giving you power, you get what I'm saying there? He said the reason for him that he has been given power and authority. And this power is going to back you up for this singular reason that you go and make disciple. He didn't say go and gather disciple. He said go and make disciple. That's what it says there. If you look at the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 19, the same thing there. So Jesus is a maker. That's where I'm going. Jesus is a maker. Uh, scripture says that you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. That's the original rendition there. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. As scripture explained for that, that Jesus is the truth. He says, sanctify them with truth. Thy word is true. And the word is himself. So which means that Jesus is a maker there. The word of Jesus is a maker. The essence of this discipleship or this teaching is to make us into the image of God. Hallelujah. So go forth and make disciple. Make disciple of all nations. This is what the Amplified Version says. The Amplified Version says, Hallelujah. The Amplified Version says, um, Go and make disciple of, sorry, the, the, the message version rather. Go and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life. In this way of life. That's making them there. There is a particular way of life. And the Amplified Version says, Help the people to learn of me. Believe in me and obey my words. That's what it says. Make disciple of all nations means, Help the people to learn of me. Believe in me and obey my words. The very purpose of his coming is to make discipleship. Is to make a disciple rather. That's the purpose of coming. I know that salvation is good, but salvation is the beginning, the first phase of this whole thing. Discipleship is the core of this thing there, which means that you can be saved. And I've said this before, that scripture saying, Paul speaking there, he said that I pray that and I wish there, that I pray that you will be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. That's where discipleship starts from. You will be saved, but discipleship starts from coming to the knowledge of truth. Coming to the knowledge of truth. So discipleship is the sole purpose of his coming. Discipleship. You are born again, but now you have been discipled. You have been discipled. So what is discipleship? And I'm quickly 
to quickly, you know, you know, go into that. Then we go into the prayer life of a disciple. But you need to understand what a disciple is. A disciple, discipleship rather, is a system of kingdom continuation and extension. The way we extend the frontiers of the gospel is the fact that we make disciples. This is the reason why. The gospel is forceful. The gospel is, 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 is great work. The gospel is, is uh, from the days of John the Baptist even up to now, is that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent there take it by force. Hallelujah. Another version of the Bible says the rugged, the violent take it by force. Which means the gospel needs to push the frontiers. You know, the disciples there need to push the frontiers of the gospel and we don't push it by being weak. You know, disciples are not weaklings. The purpose of making is to make giants, is to make egos, is to make soldiers. Hallelujah. So, discipleship is a system of kingdom extension. We want to extend the kingdom of God. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, Therefore, I have come to do what? To establish the kingdom. He said, Repent. He said, For the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus brought the kingdom of God. And when Jesus brought the kingdom of God, there were already existing kingdoms. Did you get what I'm saying there? They were already existing existing kingdoms and what makes the kingdom of God uh, supersede or extend these frontiers is the fact that we fight our way into it. We push the boundaries of the kingdom until every other kingdom gives way for our kingdom. And we cannot do that just by just being a Christian alone. We must be trained and discipled for it. Hallelujah. That's why it says, in the last day, the mountain of the lost house shall be established upon all mountains. Which means that there is already existing mountains, but the mountains of the lost house shall be established upon. Which means, how do we establish it? We establish it through the end of discipleship. Hallelujah. Of disciple. We establish it through the system of discipleship. He said, I will train your end for war and your fingers for battle. That's what discipleship is. They have trained ends, trained fingers for battle. Discipleship is a system of kingdom ex- extension and continuation. Secondly, discipleship is the lifeline of kingdom influence. Discipleship is a lifeline of kingdom influence. If you want the kingdom of God to be influential, it rides upon the discipleship system that we put in place as believers. He rides upon the discipleship system that we have in place as a church. Discipleship is the lifeline of kingdom influence. Is the lifeline of kingdom influence. Is the lifeline of kingdom influence. That's discipleship. Discipleship is a devotion to the spread of the doctrine of Christ. Discipleship is a system for devotion to the spread of the doctrines of Christ. That's what discipleship does. So when we establish discipleship, it's a system to spread the doctrines of Christ. So who is a disciple? A disciple is one who has consciously accepted and aggressively assisting in propagating the doctrines of Christ. I love that. A disciple is one who has constant consciously accepted aggressively assisting or aggressively pushing the propagation of the doctrine of Christ. That's where disciple is. You have consciously accepted. It's not the fact that, you know, you, you woke up today and said you are not more anymore. No. You have consciously accepted. That's where discipleship is. A disciple is. And aggressively pushing, extending the frontiers of the gospel, aggressively propagating the doctrine of Christ. That's where disciple is. So, which means, if you have not consciously accepted your, 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 your submission to the will of God, you, have not, you are not propagating in whatever way. It might be on your social media page. It might be in your church. It might be in your office. It might be on the road. It might be in the plane. Whatever you are doing, constantly, aggressively assisting in propagating the doctrine of Christ. That's what a disciple is. A disciple is carrying the matter of God on their head. In everything that they do. In every space that they find themselves. Thank you, Jesus. A disciple is one who is... I love this one. I love this one because this... The Lord gave me personally. He said, a disciple is one who is disciplined with the principles of Christ. 
a disciple is one who is disciplined with the principles of Christ. So when you see a disciple, you will see the discipline of Christ. Paul said, let no man touch me, for I bear him in the mark of Christ. The mark is there. The discipline is there. The sacrifices are there. The things that have suffered for the sake of Christ, they are there. A disciple is one who is disciplined with the principle of Christ. A disciple is one who is in constant desperation for the DNA and the, and the, and the alignment with Christ. Constant desperation to be in alignment. Always checking. Always testing every spirit. Always checking. Am I in line? Am I in tune? Constant alignment with Christ. Thank you, Lord. A disciple is an ardent upholder of their culture and the values of Christ. An ardent upholder, which means someone who takes to art the values and the culture of Christ. Doctrine is key to any disciple. Doctrine is key to any disciple. Not manifestation of power. Doctrine is key to any disciple. <laughs> Doctrine is key to any disciple. How God thinks about it is key. What God says about it is key to any disciple. You cannot be a disciple without upholding the doctrines of Christ. What is paramount in the heart of Christ is paramount in your heart. That's where disciple is. Before you boast, as a, he said, let him that boast, boast in this, that he knows me. That's a disciple. Let him that boast, boast in this, that he knows the Lord. That he upholds his values. That he does his will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, it is from teaching to doctrine, from doctrine, it builds culture, culture dictates response, response dictates results. Thank you, Lord. So, teaching brings doctrine, doctrine builds culture, culture dictates response, response dictates results. So, if you want to get the result of Christ, you must listen to the teaching of Christ, embrace the doctrine of Christ, then build the culture and propagate the culture of Christ, the responses and the results will come effortlessly. If you want to have the result of Jesus, listen to the teachings of Jesus. Listen to the teachings of Jesus. Embrace the doctrines of Jesus. Prop emulate the culture of Jesus then your responses and results will follow suit. Thank you, Lord. So, we will now go into what is prayer. So, I have listed the, 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 the discipleship system. And I have listed where a disciple is. When you look into this, it helps in your prayer life. The fact that you value what God value, you uphold the culture and the doctrine. And that is what I'm saying. You cannot pray effectively as a disciple if you do not know the doctrines of Christ. Let me explain what that means. The doctrines of Christ guide you to know how God prays or how Christ prayed about it and the idea that Christ has concerning it. Now that is why you see many people pray in a strange way. Strange prayer points. You understand? Every scotch egg, every... You know, you hear strange prayer points. And that's because the doctrine is not... Now listen to me. We are not neglecting the fact that certain picture might come in the realm of the spirit that looks like some of these things that they call. You understand? But when it's subjected to the doctrines of Christ, you will understand what is behind the pictures. You cannot use the pictures seen in dream to pray. When the pictures are not established in the doctrines and in the letters of Christ and in the words of Christ. Did you get what I'm saying here? One day, I, I, I woke up, I mean, I, I, I did a, a, a prayer overnight. You know, something was, I mean, a couple of years ago, something wasn't just right, so I, I, I had to take um, a retreat to a location. And I just, I, I prayed. And after praying for hours, I knew. The Holy Spirit told me, be ready for tonight. Something is going to happen. I said I was ready. So I slept. I mean, I slept very late, maybe around four or thereabout. Just one hour into my sleep. And, you know, all of a sudden, I was in this dream a very massive demonic dog chasing me. Very hungry. Very hungry. Extremely hungry. I've never seen a dog as hungry as that before. The dog was chasing me, chasing me. Uh, caught me at a corner. The dog beat me at my leg. Strong one. Then a, an old woman from afar said, come, come, come. I will use the dog to heal you. He said, bring the dog. I will use the dog to heal you. I woke up from the sleep. And I woke up from the sleep. 
I could have jumped up and said, every dog chasing me. I could have woke up and said, every fat woman somewhere. No. I stood up from the dream and I went back into what the word of the Lord says. Into what the doctrines of Christ say. There is nowhere in the word of God that says that the word of the Lord represents a dog. Nowhere. I scan through my spirit. The word of the Lord can represent water. It can represent fire. It can represent armor. It can represent wine. It can represent... But there is nowhere where the word of the Lord was, 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 you know, was used in, in relationship with a dog. So there is no way someone in the dream can use the dog to heal me. I knew from the doctrines and the readings of Christ that that was the wrong dream. So I stood my ground and I come against that dog. Hallelujah. And I know what the Bible says is against the dog. I know what the Bible, I know the places where the Bible mentioned dog. Even Goliath himself said, am I a dog? So that one that came into my spirit, I knew that this is a Goliath trying to affect me. And I stood as one. Say, I came in the name of the, uh, 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 of the uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, army of Israel. Just like David said. I came in that name and I abolished the result and the effect of the dream. And here I am today. Because I understood the doctrines of Christ. I understood the saints of Christ. I understood the culture of Christ. He helped me in my prayer life. Many people pray amiss because they pray just based on the pictures that they see in the spirit realm. <laughs> Someone says, any, any, any mirror monitoring my destiny. You understand? The only place where mirror was made measure was the word of God. Hallelujah. Though you might see such things in this realm of the spirit, they are called deceptions in the realm of the spirit. Deceptions. But you will look for what the word says concerning it. Then you will tackle whatever picture it is. The picture is not the power. It's the deception behind it that you need to tackle. So how does a disciple pray? And what is prayer? Prayer is produced when we pray. I love that one. Oh, glory to God. First Chronicles chapter 17, verse 25. Or oh, let's go to 2 Samuel, if I'm right. 2 Samuel there. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 27. I see something very powerful here. He said, For you, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, have revealed to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found it in his heart to pray this prayer to you. Did you get what I'm saying here? He said, You have revealed to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. God showed him a revelation. He said, Therefore, I have found it in my heart to pray this prayer. So prayer is produced when we pray. I love that. Prayer is a revelation. God has shown you what he will do. Then you will press in in prayer. <laughs> God has shown you a good marriage. Then you press in based on what he has shown you. Then you now have confidence to pray. Another version of the Bible says there that now I have confidence to pray. Why? Because you have shown me. Prayer is a revelation. Prayer is effective when it comes by revelation. God shows you what to pray about. That's why praying in tongues is good. That's why praying in tongues is good. Because it searches the deep things of God and helps you pray according to the will of God, said the word. Praying in the spirit helps you pray according to the will of God revealed in your spirit. Number two, and I round up on prayer there. Prayer is an act of sharing and exchanging of spiritual realities. Prayer is an act of sharing and exchanging spiritual realities. Isaiah chapter, um, chapter 40. Thank you, Lord. I believe you are getting blessed. Oh, glory to God. Glory be to God. He said, but those who wait upon the Lord. And let, let, me, let me even read from verse 30. He said, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. <laughs> Scripture says that by strength shall no man prevail. Or by human strength shall no man prevail. And this is what he's saying there. That youths that are powerful, they shall faint and weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I love what another version of the Bible says. He said, those who wait upon God shall exchange their weakness for his strength. So prayer is an act of sharing and exchanging or exchange of spiritual realities. Prayer is an act of sharing and 
exchange of spiritual realities. When we come into the place of prayer as a disciple, we come with our own spiritual realities of weakness. We live with the lost spiritual realities of strength. We come with our own spiritual realities of confusion. We live with the lost spiritual reality of convictions. We come with our own spiritual realities of blindness. We look, we live with, our, with the lost spiritual realities of insights. It's an exchange. Those who wait upon the Lord, it shall exchange their weakness for his own strength. That is why when you go into the place of prayer, when you come out, you come out renewed. You come out invigorated. You come out with so much power to face the world. Why? Because there has been an exchange of spiritual realities. <laughs> exchange of spiritual realities. That's why scripture says Jesus often withdraw himself to the mountain to pray. Why? When he comes back, he has exchanged his spiritual realities as a weak son of man to a bold and empowered son of God. Hallelujah. You cannot do much without a prayer life. You can only do as much as your prayer life can cover. Did you get what I'm saying here? You can only do much as much as your prayer life can cover. Whatever your prayer life cannot cover, your destiny cannot handle in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Prayer is the authorization permit a man gives divinity to, entertain on, to intervene on earth or in human realm. Prayer is the authorization permit a man gives divinity to intervene on earth. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Woo! Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He said, Behold, I stand at the door. If you hear my voice there and open the door, I will come to you and dine with you and eat with me. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 115. Verse 15. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He said, may, the Lord, may you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. He said, the heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth he has given to the sons of men. Which means this earth belongs to you. But to invite heaven to earth, it is prayer that we give. So that's why I said prayer is the authorization permit a man gives divinity to intervene on earth. You are on earth here, but the earth responds to divinity because the earth was created by divinity there. So how we make the earth respond to us is the fact that we offer prayer, that divinity will intervene into humanity there. So prayer is the authorization permit. It's you authorizing. That is why he says there that when you pray, he said when, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe. That belief there is the connecting line. But you will pray. You will pray. When you pray, believe. That belief is the connecting line there. But there is an authorization permit that you give. And when we pray, he said, I did not ministry spirit. We encounter or we invite ministry spirit to be able to engage on earth. Thank you, Jesus. This is the features of a, of, of, of a disciple prayer life. This is how you know. That your prayer life is making is making progress. Number one, your prayer life is equal to your Rema life. I love that. Your prayer life is equal to your Rema life. He said, You cannot see beyond your press. You cannot see beyond your press. It is how far you press in God, is how far you see in God. Did you get me here? Is how far you press in God. You press in the place of prayer. Press in the place of fasting. Press in the place of consecration. How far you press in God is how far you see in God. So your prayer life is equal to your Rema life. Open my eyes that I may see. It is via prayer that our spiritual blindness is opened. Via prayer. A man of prayer is not a blind man. I can tell you for a fact. A man of prayer, his eyes will be open. That's those are those are one of the benefits of prayer. <laughs> because prayer is a, because prayer is a is is a what do I call it now? Prayer is a surveillance strategy in the realm of the spirits. If you read the book of Daniel, chapter two, verse sixteen to nineteen, you will see there. 
Prayer is a surveillance strategy in the realm of the spirit. It is by prayer that we see into realms of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Into realms of the spirit. You know, sometimes people come um, and say, Pastor, this is happening. Pastor, this is happening. And stuff like that. And I said, okay, no problem. Don't talk again. I said, let us pray. And I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this discussion we're about to have. Let your wisdom be made manifest. Let us speak in tongues for a few seconds. And as we begin to speak in tongues, I open my eyes. And I say, sister, this, 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 and this. Why? Because as we begin to speak in tongues, our eyes open. Then we see into the realms of the spirit. Ah! My sister, this is it. Someone came to me one day and was, you know, was speaking, was speaking, and was speaking, and was speaking, and was speaking, and said, at a point, the Holy Spirit said, it's lying. I said, Lord, how do you know? The Lord said, let's pray. I said, sister, let us pray. We began to pray. We began to pray. And I said, in Jesus' name. I said, this one you lied. This particular, where you were saying the truth from here, but when you got here, my sister, lie in that. Because prayer is a surveillance strategy in the realm of the spirit. So you cannot see beyond your prayers. Your prayer life is equal to your Rema life. Rema is the open word. Hallelujah. The revealed word of God to every man. So you cannot, nothing can be revealed to you beyond the access that you have in present in prayer. Number two, I love this one. There is nothing like I'm not a prayer person because prayer is the litmus test of your spirituality. When we're growing up in these science things, there's something that very tiny people, they call it litmus test or litmus paper rather. You put it in an acid, it turns a color. You put it in alkaline solution, it turns a color. Prayer is the litmus test of your spirituality. How do you know a man? One of the ways you know a man that is spiritual is a man that is powerful, that is prayerful as a disciple. I remember what I've said about discipleship. Doctrines, values are there. And is prayerful in these doctrines and values. Prayer is the litmus test for spirituality. You cannot claim spirituality, you cannot claim spirituality if you are not a man of prayer. Is the litmus test. This is how we know that you are spiritual, that you are a man full of fire. When they say, Let us pray for 30 minutes, that is the beginning. Some people want to say, Let us pray for 15 minutes, you're already sleeping in five minutes. No, in five minutes, you're already visiting another room. Let us pray 30 minutes. We are still giving glory to God. One hour, we are still saying, Father, hallowed be thy name. Two hours, then we are coming into Lord, wash me clean. Let your word take deep root in me. Two hours, then we are still saying, three hours, you are now saying, let us go into the real business. Prayer is the spiritual litmus test for your spirituality. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to be serious as a believer, you cannot play with your prayer life. Jesus said unto the disciple, can't you watch over me for an hour? It is the minimum requirement an hour. An hour is the minimum requirement. Minimum. Perusa, take a perusa. An hour is very, very 60, 60 minutes. Very, very, very quick thing there. An hour is very quick. Especially when you do it at night. It flies, it flies like jet. That's why you do it in the day. When all activities are there. That is why an hour looks like a whole day or a whole week. When you do it at night, you will know when the one hour is gone. Two hours gone. My Korah Sata By the time you are done with three hours, you still feel like praying. That's prayer. And you are consistent with it. Because that's another thing. You pray one on Tuesday. Then the next one you pray is another, is, 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 is another month. <laughs> Consistency in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm rounding up with this. I mentioned two more. Then we begin to take it to the next broadcast. Thank you, Lord. Your prayer life is your true what in the realm of the spirit. Ah, I love this. Oh, I love this. I love this. I love this. Your prayer life is your true what in the realm of the spirit. Did you get what I'm saying there? Look at what the sons of Sceva said unto those boys. They said, Paul, we know Jesus. We know who are you. Because in the hierarchy of things, it is from it is in prayer that you increase rank. Did you get what I'm saying there? And that is why, I, and, and that is why I love the way I started. I balanced it up because some people say, and some we have seen some people prayer. We have seen some people, but they are worse than devil. Listen to me. Listen to me. I know that we have people like that. But that's why I taught you listen from the beginning. Listen from the beginning. I spoke about the values and the culture of the kingdom, of the values and the culture of Christ. So I'm talking about discipleship here. Call discipleship. 
Not all these brothers and sisters going around speaking in tongues, blasting in tongues, and doing nonsense. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about discipleship, God discipleship. By the time you start praying, your prayer life increases your rank in the spirit. There are ranks in the spirit. Look at the book of Joel. Scripture says, "Do not break." They do not break their ranks. There are, there are ranks in this in this New Testament fiery kind of Christianity. There are ranks in these things. Whatever your prayer life cannot cover, <laughs> your laying of hands cannot cover it. Miracles only happen within the circumference of your prayer life. Whatever your prayer life can cover, the miracle within that circumference will happen. But when your prayer life has not covered certain things, no matter how you pray, you need higher power, higher grace. Thank you, Jesus. So your prayer life is your rank in the spirit. You cannot order or conquer what your prayer life I cannot cover. <laughs> Did you get that? You cannot order in the spirit. You cannot cover in the spirit what your prayer life has not covered. You cannot order in the spirit. You cannot conquer in the spirit what your prayer life cannot cover. Your prayer life is your true worth. It said, Paul we know, my brother. Jesus we know. They, they were telling them very, very clear. He said, but there is a question here. We looked at the hierarchy of things. We have found some of these prophets that you have said there. We have found some of these disciples that you have said there. But we didn't see your name. We checked. We, I even asked my friend to go and check another book. We checked, but your name is not there. And the guy was unable to support his claim. They beat them. My brother, ah, they beat, you never to see them. They beat them blue and black. Because you cannot conquer what your prayer life has not covered. You cannot conquer what your prayer life has not ordered. Lastly, your prayer life is your meal ticket on the table of kingdom matters. I love it. Your prayer life is your meal ticket on the table of kingdom matters. When we are talking about deep things in the kingdom, when we are talking about deep things in the mind of God, and when I talk about kingdom, there, I'm not mean, I don't mean what to eat and what to drink. No, that's not what I'm saying. I mean deep things concerning the happenings and the doings of God on earth. The present happenings in heaven translated upon earth. When we are talking about deep things that God is sending to his fair, that this is what God is sending to the IT world. This is what God is sending to the financial world. This is what God is sending to the banking world. Yeah. This is what God is sending to the political world. This is what is building up in the prophetic. Your prayer life is your meal ticket, which means when they are on, on that banquet there, he said when you want to enter that banquet to receive from the Lord, what is saying concerning the sector in your life? What is saying concerning your ministry? What is saying concerning the body of Christ? What is saying concerning your department? What is saying concerning your sphere? He said when you want to enter into that discussion, what they ask for in the realm of the spirit is how long and how far have you gone in prayer? Your prayer is your meal ticket. They ask you, my brother, where is your prayer? That's why some people never leave a level. They get to a level and they are stuck there for life because that's how far their prayer can help them. If you want to delve into more of kingdom things, it takes more prayer, more discipline, more prayer. Your prayer is your meal ticket on the table of kingdom matters. There are things happening in your sector. How come you don't know? <laughs> My God. There are things happening in your country. How come you don't know? There are things happening in your sector, in your sphere. How come you don't know? There are things that God is ready to release. My God, I'm speaking prophetically here. There are things that God is ready to release in every sphere of the world, in every sector of the world. How come you are not on the table making decisions? How come you are not on the table knowing exactly how the heavens are permutating these things to occur? How come it goes to the outside world? How, because these things are, are in the realms of the spirit. And let me break your bubbles. The realm of the spirit is an easy realm to assess. It's for everybody, both believers and unbelievers. What makes it unique for us is the fact that we go through the right route. The Holy Ghost, the creator of everything. So when you go through the right route, you get the entire source. Not the people who open the window to quickly pinch into things. And that is why you see some people get access into certain things, but you know that you can do better than that. Only that when they asked you for your meal ticket, you didn't have it. 
but few people that were able to open the window and access the fence and the crack in the hole. They were able to get just a small part, a minute part of the doings of God in a sector. And they bring that minute part to the, to the earth and they begin to walk upon it and we all celebrate it. Meanwhile, the people who have the true access to it has no power to access the table has no power. That's my challenge. My challenge is the fact that you celebrate too much what you should have betted, but was better through another man in a minute way. Yet God is telling upon the, heart of the, the door of your heart that you can do more if only you can pray more. Where this little thing came from, I have the original source. The source code is with me. If only you can press in more. Your prayer life is your meal ticket on the table of kingdom matters. Wherever you are, lift up your voice and pray. In 30 seconds, I want to release something into your spirit all over the world. Jeteme Kodina Bristofela Katulia Kaskentolia Manto Pele Kaikobompe La Kaskumfala Rusi Ketele Baraskem my God, Sheketema le Kaskumpova, Etwate Asizo, Parante Askentala, Rupaske Popele, Krekuva Kreskampole, Ruskapale Keskampana, Sampelia, all over the world, wherever you are, Lord, I release, let there be openings of chambers, chambers of the spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I call in men into strange places of revelation, strange, strange doors, strange doors of prayer altar, in the name of the Lord Jesus, wherever they are, families, female, men, Children, uncles, right now. Mam topele keskofela, ruta pasito baratke telikaya. I take you out of the mundane. I bring into the extraordinary. Access portals. Access portals. Access portals. Access a popo e kwake taporia. Mam tofe krate kaskumpola. E pristos kapele keskentele. In the name of Jesus. Woo, mama te mungala. My God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. Make sure you take more time to pray as we commence in this broadcast. In the next broadcast, you will have more of it. But take some time to pray. I said, Lord, let me not just be an ordinary man. Father, equip me in my prayer time, in my prayer life. So I have to access the deep things of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Please, if you want to be part of what God is doing here at Eden Life Experience Center, we're starting our physical Sunday service pretty soon in the next coming weeks. Please sign up using the links on the screen. You want to join the workforce. That's the first step. Let us be part of the workforce uh, the more we have, the more impact we can make and the more damage we can make to the kingdom of darkness and more impact to the kingdom of God. So join us today. We will equip you efficiently for the work of the ministry and for the thing God has laid in your heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus. If you also sing, please register. You're a professional music person. Uh, you play equipment. Kindly register using the links on the screen. And today, if you want to give your offerings and your tithe, please make use of the banking details and your partnership pledge. Make use of the banking details. And Father, we thank you for every offering. Give us titles, every partners all over the world. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus that you visit them at the point of their needs. Open unto them visions, ideas, resources that we help them to propagate the gospel of our Lord Jesus and make them live a better life financially. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. God bless you. See you at our next broadcast. Bye.